Welcome to episode number two of CRT Gaming. Today we're going to be uh, playing on a 16-bit powerhouse Sega Genesis Model 1 Launch Edition. You know, the one that has high definition stamped across the top, no lockout chip. Uh, that console. And our scan lines are brought to you today by the Sony Trinitron CRT TV. And so it's a pretty good combination, uh, even with all of its flaws. And I'm still tweaking the settings and trying to get, um, you know, trying to improve the picture that I'm getting. And I'm not, not real happy with what we're looking at right now, but. Uh, like I said, you know, CRT gaming, it's going to have flaws, so uh, the main point of this is just to kick back, relax, and enjoy some retro gaming on a CRT TV, the way they were meant to be played, in my opinion. Systems were designed to be played on a CRT TV. Um, and I have played my Sega Genesis Mini connected to an HD TV, of course. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. I just prefer CRT. And I and you know that's completely nostalgic reasons, of course. And uh, I know a lot of people that really like um, playing on a HD TV and trying to um, upscale, you know, the picture out of an original console. And that's cool too, man. That's that's cool. You play it whatever way that gives you the most joy is, you know, that's the way I look at it. And uh, playing on a CRT TV gives me the most joy. So we're going to be checking this out. I'm not going to play through the entire game, of course. And uh, my intent is not to speedrun or to uh, complete the game. I don't want these episodes to be long and laborious to watch. Um, I want them to be fun and nostalgic and I just really <laughs> have felt the need to record CRT TV footage I don't know why but um, so you know look forward in the future I'm gonna uh, try to tweak and, and get better at it and get a better picture for you right now basically I'm recording this on a iPhone with my frame rate set to 30 Thank you, Dad Racer, for that tip. And uh, it, you know, it looks good. It looks a lot better than I thought it would. And yeah, so you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to tweak. I think that there's some settings in the TV itself that I could uh, improve on and maybe uh, get a better picture. So, all right. So um, basically, I'm gonna play until I die once, or at least get through. Zone 2 and the second boss. That should take around 15 minutes and of course I'm not going to uh, play any of the bonus levels. So we're just going to go through and have fun. Um, I don't know, you know this... <laughs> the Green Hill Zone is probably my favorite zone out of the original Sonic. The Labyrinth Zone? Yeah, not so much. You know, they could have left that zone completely out of the game, and I'd have been okay with that. <laughs> I'd have been okay with the shorter Sonic <laughs> without the Labyrinth Zone. Um, of course you can get through it, and there's ways of doing it that makes it a little less frustrating than normal, but, um, you know, if you take the high path, and you can figure that out. And, uh, you know, it's all memorization. Um, but it, it can be annoying, and it can be frustrating. Um, the Green Hill Zones Zone is uh, the best way to start a Sonic game off, man. That, they, I don't know, just the first time you play this game and you start in the Green Hill Zone, and it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, yeah, it really did suck you into the game and kind of make you more invested in playing the game and it left you with a memory because at the time there was nothing like this on a home console and you have to remember you know the going from an 8-bit Nintendo game which I love my NES don't get me wrong but uh, 
going from an 8-bit Nintendo game to like this level where you're behind the waterfall and collecting rings. Um, amazing. Seriously. Uh, there wasn't anything like it. And it was a big step up back then. It was a groundbreaking game in my opinion. Uh, how many of those commercials did you see with uh, Sonic just, you know, flying through the level and um, <laughs> going upside down and, and just uh, the speed involved and the graphics and the music and the sound that just uh, made you want a Sega Genesis back in the day. It certainly um, was a notch in a Sega Genesis owner's belt when Sonic finally came out. And I do remember <laughs> um, sending in my UPC code off my original Sega Genesis launch model box and to cut the, the UPC uh, code off and I sent it in and got a free copy of Sonic the Hedgehog. Do you guys remember that um, promotion that they were running back in the day? Uh, of course mine came with uh, Altered Beast um, <laughs> and that was a great launch game um, Sonic wasn't done by then so it was pretty cool um, you know, a lot of people don't like the Marble Zone. I, I like it. I like this zone. Uh, it does slow the game down a little bit. And really, if you're playing Sonic and you want to uh, uh, beat Sonic <laughs> and stay alive, um, it is kind of funny as I take a hit there. But, uh, I mean, if you play just 100% speed all the time, you're not going to make it through the game unless you're like a speedrunner and you have every obstacle memorized, which, you know, that's possible. Uh, but really, <laughs> for normal players, you're going to have to slow down at times and, you know, because a lot of times your enemies will come in from the screen and you can't see them in time to uh, avoid them, so it's not always 100% speed and that's one of the criticisms that uh, the original Sonic has is that you know, slows the game down at times. And this level does. This zone does slow the game down. Um, but as I play through the first two or three zones, I, my main goal back in the day was to get as many rings as possible. You get a hundred rings, you get an extra guy. Um, and that was the whole thing. This was just cool, man. Just being able to push that block off and, and lift that press there with all the spikes on the end of it. I don't need that bubble, but, you know, use or lose it, so we're going to use it. Uh, the lava here, in my opinion, is done very well. I just... Uh, oh, man. I just really do enjoy this game. And one of the most nostalgic Sega Genesis games, really. Yeah, to me. There's a lot of um, Sega Genesis sports games that were nostalgic to me, too, because that was a big deal back then as well. Uh, being able to play an NFL licensed game, you know, uh, and Madden football once they got the NFL license and the players license, and, uh, you know, that, that was pretty cool. Um, and I'll tell you what, I liked sports talk football, so Joe Montana sports talk football, I liked it. It was a good game back then. Alright, so we got uh, through Act 1 of the Marble Zone, Zone number 2. We'll see how we do here in Act number 2. At times I am not very good at multitasking. I'm just going to uh, lay that out there. <laughs> I don't know if you'll ever see me complete a game <laughs> in a playthrough or a, a live play, but uh, that's really not what this is about. This is about enjoyment. So, And this can be a tough little area right here, but uh, got through it pretty easily. Just the animation of Sonic and the speed of the game 
uh, and you know there are times when you get hit and you lose a bunch of rings that there is major slowdown uh, but for the most part I mean that this just wasn't something that we saw back in the day it was uh, amazing yeah, and it was pretty funny you know the first time you'd have a friend over that hadn't played the Sega Genesis like I had my cousin over uh, Thomas and um, showed him Sonic for the first time and <laughs> he was wowed at it and tried to uh, get that Sonic the Hedgehog from me and eventually did and one of these days I'm gonna bring that up in one of my worst trades ever um, so <laughs> that original Sonic uh, yeah I ended up trading it away and I traded it for a really bad game but that's uh, that's a topic for another episode <laughs> Um, yeah, regretted it for a long time and had to get Sonic again, because I, I just had to. And I do think that as far as gameplay and technical aspects, they did improve Sonic each time on the Sega Genesis. Now, I'm not going to say, you know, Sonic 3D Blast, uh, I, I don't think that's a bad game, um, but it was certainly different. And I don't know that that would be an improvement on Sonic 3, really. Um, but Sonic, from Sonic 1 to 2, and then um, Sonic and & Knuckles and Sonic 3, uh, there were improvements. And also that lock-on technology, remember that? Uh, that was awesome. And the, just some of the animations, like when I was standing on the edge there like that, uh, back in the day that was cool man that was really cool and that would be one of the first things you'd show somebody you know <laughs> watch this when I stand on the edge of this watch what happens <laughs> yeah, it was the little things back then man <laughs> there was no Skyrim back then I don't know, sometimes I uh, have some of the trouble with the flying lava. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did alright there. And just going back and finding uh, rings in the hidden places was very cool too. There was some uh, um, exploration in this game, you know? doesn't get really talked about much, but there was. And really gave the Sega Genesis an amazing platformer to uh, have available. And really helped them push, push them over the top. And, you know, the Sega took the lead in the competition with Nintendo there for a while. And uh, Sonic was a big reason for that. I mean, can you really imagine... Uh, gaming without Sonic the Hedgehog at this point. So, yeah, it did have a mark on the gaming industry and uh, uh, the design of games, and it was it was groundbreaking at the time. Very much so. And I remember, you know, first getting used to this game and just playing it and getting lost on some of these levels and it would seem like you'd end up at the same place that you started from but uh, it just took a while to kind of learn them and get through them. Alright man, so Act 2 is in the books. I'm going to see if we can uh, get through this last act in the Marble Zone and uh, without dying. I will tell you that I do have a hard time remembering to call like when you're collecting rings instead of coins and uh, so you know you have to give that to Mario. <laughs> Man I just about died there. If you stay on that thing it's gonna smash you when it goes all the way to the top there. Uh, this part is 
red wool for me. And there you go. I do like the mechanic of, you know, as long as you have a ring in your possession, you've got some type of protection. You can take that hit and uh, not, not die. But, and that was kind of cool to be able to look up and down too. That was, that was kind of a big feature back in the day. It's not going to be a hundred, a hundred rings <laughs> on this level. We're going to do a little styling and profiling though. Yeah, Ric Flair would be very proud right there. Get to a hidden area up here and get another extra guy that'll give me 11 if I uh, make it through this area unscathed. So you just want to jump across those and boom. There you go. <laughs> Spit you right out to where you could uh, lose all your coins in just a matter of seconds. Alright. Uh, back the other way. Yeah, back the other way. Yeah, this uh, this part with the, the spikes can be a little difficult at times too. Yeah, man, I'm terrible at this. Uh, and there is some slowdown right there. Yeah, you know, I just I took that hit just to kind of show you guys that there was some slowdown. It was intentional, of course. But when you want to talk about like the controls on a platformer. Um, controls and Sonic the Hedgehog are, they're good because that wasn't the controls, that was me <laughs> uh, alright, we're going to try to kill this boss without any rings so no protection, let's do this pretty easy boss just got to uh, figure out the patterns try to get in a cheap shot right there hit him go across hit him, avoid the flames, and he doesn't take as many hits if I remember correct. We, let's see here, uh, maybe he does, this should be the last one, there we go, alright, so I ended up with 11 guys, should have ended up with, a, with 12, but anyway. Well, thank you guys very much for watching and uh, taking time out of your day to join me today, and I hope you have a great and safe rest of your day.